A fly has eyes on the side of its head and like wasps and bees have it on the front of their head. Flies have two wings and then bees have four wings. Like wait, like some flies look like bees and some bees look like flies. The flies that look like bees are the hardest. And also flies, I just noticed they have this little pattern they rub their hands together after they go to something and that kind of helps me notice too. Yeah, I got three. Hello. So there's seven flies, and nine bees, and no one. There's two, now there's only one. There's fly away with There's another one on that yellow flower. It's now visited once and now visited twice. The students end up uh, becoming like scientists when they come outside and they become very serious like scientists. So even though in the classroom sometimes they might joke around, as soon as they have that clipboard in their hand and they come outside, they are a scientist and they take it really seriously. I want to try to figure out what plants bees most visit and what uh, plants flies most visit and why they visit them. We've seen a lot of flies. After we get the data, we go to the Great Sunflower Project website and we enter it in. It's a pretty simple process. It's you literally just type in your numbers and everything of everything you saw on your trip. The Citizen Scientist Project does feel different than doing normal schoolwork because we actually get to provide information to the scientists that will actually use it for real-world data that could help the bee population once it's declining. You gotta click search to reset the search filter. I'm scared of bumblebees. Like I don't like bumblebees that sting, though I love researching them. Uh, they're fun and interesting uh, creature to understand, and I feel like this helps me to be less scared around bumblebees. Number seventeen point three percent. As a scientist, when I first started learning about the natural world. It was clear to me that insects were really important. There's so many of them and they're doing so many things. An apple or having strawberries, having tomatoes for your pizza. Those are things that pollinators are directly impacting. And so it's a way that you can get people hooked into the world of insects and how important they are for, for your life and for the functioning of our planet. Citizen scientist volunteers really help me as a biologist to be able to cover a lot more ground than I usually do. When people come to help me um, with the Minnesota bumblebee survey, I give them little cups that they use to go and collect bumblebees from flowers and I ask them to pay attention to what flower they're collecting from because I want that information. I look at the bees and identify them to species. There are a couple of species that are difficult to tell apart and so those bees I, I need to take a closer look at. Yes, yes, they both have spines but on Pennsylvanicus it's really long and pointy. Oh yeah, I can see that on that leg right clear as a bell. But once they've been identified, the bees are all given a dot of paint onto their thorax. And that way, I know that I've counted them. We can let the bee go, and any bee that we see with an orange dot, we know we already counted it, and we can leave them alone. Take it inside this and go, okay, is that a, you know. Pet them and feel them buzzing. I, if anybody wants to try holding them, That's my favorite part about the snow, doing the surveys is, um, so uh, which kind of just, just this um, I've had students come back after a few years and say, hey, remember when we caught those bees at school? That was so scary, but then, but it was so cool that they just remembered it years, a few years later. And they didn't remember anything we did inside, but they remembered going outside to catch the bees.